Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the Gives in the Bank Recruiting Podcast presented by BuckeyeScoop.com. I'm Mark Givler, joined by Bill Green, as always. Uh, we are down into uh, what? We're down into the 70s uh, here on our Top 100 Countdown. We're going to start at 80 and we're going to get down to 71 here on the Tuesday, April 27th episode. Um, again, we're going to try and do 10 of these a day this week and eventually uh, by the by the early part of next week we will uh, reveal our number one player in the country for the 2022 recruiting class um let's get right into it here um number 80 jake johnson tight end out of the state of georgia committed to lsu uh just you know i don't know that lsu has been really known for the tight end position kind of more of like a wide receiver uh running back um program but uh, you know they did they did get Eric Gilbert there uh, last year, and obviously that's been a bit of its own uh, circus. But uh, Jake Johnson here, a really nice pickup out of Georgia, might be the best tight end in this class. Uh, Bill, your thoughts on Jake? Yeah, he's not Eric Gilbert from a physical standpoint. He's more you know wide receiver than he is you know brute tight end. Not an inline guy, I don't think. Kind of that hybrid tight end. He can get down the seam. Um, he's a pass catching tight end. I mean, for sure. It looks like the prototype SEC guy going to catch a million balls. Um, love the hands. I mean, he made catches on film that are out of this world. So, you know, without ever seeing him in person, you know, uh, and people always say you can make a highlight film, do anything, but the catches have to be there. You know, you can't make them up. You can't, you know, Photoshop them. So I saw catches on his highlight film that were out of this world. So, love the hands on the kid. So, you know, we'll see. He's going to bulk up. He'll mature. You know, he's got good bloodlines, you know, dad and brother played. And so I like him a lot. Like I say, he's a guy that, um, you know, if they'll throw the ball to him, he'll catch a ton of balls there. Yeah. I think he might be the best receiving tight end in the class nationally. And again, I know he's down here at 80. It's, it's not the, it's not the, the caliber of maybe tight end class we've seen in recent years. Like, like I said, we just had a, epic tight end class a couple of years ago there that those guys were fresh from this past fall. Um, so I don't see a guy like that in this class to this point, but um, as, for my money, Jake Johnson's as good as there is um, in, in this particular class. Um, 79. Uh, this is, this is a guy you love. I mean, I like him too, but this is a guy you were really yeah. impressed with. Uh, and that is that yeah. is Tyson Ford, a big defensive end out of Burroughs and in, in St. Louis, uh, committed to Notre Dame. Um, you saw him last summer. We both did, and and you were you know we were yep. both very impressed. Your your thoughts on Tyson Ford? Yeah, I love the first step. Um, you know, he's listed I think as a as a weak side defensive end. I think he's going to fill out and be a strong side defensive end. It wouldn't shock me if he could play inside in a four three kind of he might end up being like a Davon Hamilton kid, but he's something he's going to play. I mean, great motor, love the body, love the quick first step. So I, I'm very high on this kid, you know, going to Notre Dame. Um, I think it's a good choice for him. I think he fits there really well. And I think he's solid, consistent, um, not a boomer bust guy at all. I think he's pretty much assured that he's not going to be a top 10 kid in this class but he's ranked right. And I think he's going to be a maybe two year starter for them and, and get drafted and play in the NFL. That's how I see Tyson Ford. Yeah. My only question now is um, what Notre, you know, I would assume that Notre Dame is now going to go to more of a four man front uh, with Marcus Freeman. Um, I think so. So when Tyson committed, that was like a match made in heaven. Cause at that point, you know, they were running a lot of three-man fronts. Uh, to me, he reminds me of like uh, a Stefan Tuit when, and who played at Notre Dame um, yeah. several years ago. Yeah. That's what he reminds me of. Um, so that's gonna be interesting to see, you know, look, football players are football players. I mean, I'm not saying he can't fit in Notre Dame scheme now. He just, it just may be in a different role. He may be yeah. more of an inside guy now in Freeman's system and so that's going to be one interesting thing for me uh, but because i thought it was such a perfect system fit at the time of the commitment but um yeah i i love the athletic you look you get these big guys up front like that that are you know six six that are probably gonna be 285 pounds that can move you'll figure it out you know yep. inside outside figure it out um figure it out later great pickup for notre dame 
Um, and then, yeah, that, that's a, that's, that's the type of guy they've churned out, you know, the last decade or so. Um, next guy, um, very much of Ohio state interest here. Um, and that is Cam Dewberry, um, Texas offensive lineman. This is another one of these guys we've talked to, we've talked about a few of these already, especially on the last episode, we had a couple of these guys, you're going to see some varying opinions on Cam Dewberry. You're going to see some people who don't think he's a top 100 player. And you're going to have people who think he's a five-star. So we've, again, I think we've kind of come in the, um, right in the, in the middle of the, the sweet spot here, as far as, you know, splitting the difference. And I, I guess for me, what would push me um, on the Dewberry is a, is more of a top 50 or a five-star type of train. I kind of need to see him a little more in person. I need to see the build six. Is he long enough to play tackle? Is he a guard? You know, and not, you know, being a guard, isn't the worst thing in the world, but obviously a, t- a tackle is a bit more of a premium position. Um, more of a unique um, prospect to, to play that position. Um, so there's some position value, possible questions here. That would be one of my concerns. Um, obviously we think very highly of him having him here in the top 80, uh, bill, you know, did we miss the mark here? You know, again, are you, cause again, you can talk to someone who thinks he's a five star, you talk to someone else who thinks maybe we shouldn't even have him in the top 100. Yeah. The co- I talked to a couple of coaches about him and they're all over the board on this kid and I've never seen him in person, but when I watched the film and he's listed at six, four, 300, he doesn't look six, four to me. And I don't think he's been 300 since he was in the ninth grade. So, you know, if he is 6'4", 300, and the arms are long, then he's a tackle and he's fine. He's, he's big time. But if he's 6'2 and a half and he's 330 right now, then I don't know. Then he's probably an inside guy. I mean, he's a, he's a punishing run blocker. I'll tell you that. I mean, he moves people. So he's a guy like he would be perfect for me that I want to see him in camp. You know what I mean? I'd love to see him in person in a camp setting more than in a, than in a game setting even. So I think he's good where he is right here. And I think if you and I run into him somewhere and we watch him, I think we could put him at 50 or we could drop him back to 105. So I don't know. I don't know. You know, there's a lot to like there. And I think just from what we see on film, he's worth having in the seventies, just on that alone. So, but I'd really like to know what the real height and the real weight really is. And I'd like to see what the frame looks like in person. So, but he deserves to be here based on his film. Yeah. I get, again, it's for me, it is like, like you kind of mentioned it, it is the body question mark for me because if, so if I'd had the body question here and then I had watched the film and then I wasn't sold on the film, he wouldn't be on this list. So the film looks good. Yeah. So that's, yeah. that's carrying the day right now. Um, I would just, I would love to kind of get an act like, man, is this, yeah. Again, is he six? Cause if he's, if he's six, two and he's not very long. And then I think we're probably where we've kind of reached kind of the peak of where we could rank him. But if he's legitimately six, four, a little leaner than maybe we, we think he is by looking at him on film, then there's still some, some growth there. Some, some ability to kind of move up the list in my opinion, but uh, so that'd be an interesting one. Um, scheduled to visit Ohio State in June. Um, that's kind of, I guess, what I want to talk about a little bit with Cam is he loves to drop the dream school thing with Ohio State. <laughs> it gets everybody so fired up. And I, you know, I just look his top, he came out of that top 10 and it was like all Southern schools and like, you know, big 12 schools. And then it was just Ohio State. So it's like, okay. Uh, Ohio state's a total outlier on his list, which makes it even more interesting to me because sometimes, you know, your first thought is, well, all the other schools have something in common. So Ohio state can't possibly get this kid. But then sometimes that's what happens is like the one outlier on the list is an outlier for a reason. Cause, because that's where he's going. So, um, I personally would take the field. I, everyone I talk to in Texas thinks he does like Ohio state, but that the, the Texas, Texas a and Oklahoma, that, that triangle of, of powerhouses down there is not going to let him get out of there. And that ultimately he's going to stay close to home. He's not going to be able to, to, to give that up and, and, and go, you know, halfway across the country. Um, 
Bill, you know, your take, do you see it differently or do you think Elijah has a shot? I mean, what are, what are your thoughts on that one uh, going into visits here in June? Yeah, the coach I talked to that has a pretty good handle on this one kind of thought A&M had the upper hand. And he also felt like you that Ohio State's definitely in it, would have to get him on campus, blow him away to pull him out of that area. But my guy kind of thought A&M was like feeling pretty good about where they stood with him. Yep, that, that'd be my pick today if I, you know, if I had to make a pick. But I don't know that any of this matters when we're talking about kids who haven't visited anywhere in 18 months that are now about to go get their official visits. So we'll see, see if that changes anything. Um, and I'm sure that, you know, like I said, they'd love to pull them out of there, um, but see what happens. Um, n- interesting guy here, uh, Larry Turner Gooden. Committed to Arizona State. He's our number 77 prospect. He is a safety athlete. Is he a linebacker? Mate? Is he a new age, you know, every down linebacker? I say yes. Um, Bill, your thoughts? Yeah, I think as a safety, he might be – I mean, he can play. You know, he's definitely a player. I would question the speed, and then you look at him as a safety, is he just not quite there? But if you look at him as a linebacker, as physical as he is, he's going to get bigger, he's going to fill out, then I think he's Darren Lee or someone along that line. I like him a lot. I mean, I think this kid can play. And, again, he could be a kid that you recruit him and tell him he's a safety, and then three days into it, it's like, go with that position group over there because that's where you're going to be playing. Kind of that hybrid, you know, everybody calls it something different. Ohio State calls it the bullet, even though they don't ever use the bullet. But he could be that, you know. That that's what I think he is. And I think he's a, a heck of a football player. I really like him. That just just based on his ability, based on where he's going, the conference that he's going to be playing in, seems to me like a guy we could see on the field pretty early at Arizona State. I think, you know, is he as high? Is he like this huge, huge upside guy? I don't know if he's that, but I think he's a guy. If he was a three-year starter at Arizona State, that wouldn't shock me at all. Uh, and then he gets a he gets a shot at the NFL. For sure. Um, I, I man, he, he like, and again, you're talking about a conference that, you know, is going to throw the ball around quite a bit. I think he's a luxury as a linebacker, as a guy, you don't have to take off the field. Um, to me, that's, to me, that's one of the better pickups that we're going to talk about on this list just because that's a guy, I mean, for, for an Arizona state to, to pull a guy like that out of California, that's a, that's a big deal. I think, um, you know, Arizona state's starting to really win some recruiting battles the last couple cycles. And that's another example here. Um, here's an interesting one for me at number 76. It's, it's Sam Horn. He's a quarterback, uh, Collins Hill high school. Again, not too far outside of Atlanta committed to Missouri. We talked about this a little bit with Rutgers with getting, um, Gavin Wimsett, yeah, And uh, I'm going to say Scott, this for Missouri to get this kid. I mean, first of all, yes, they, they got a little bit fortunate with the way the quarterback dominoes fell and they were able to kind of, you know, get in there and, and get, get a good fit. But for them, that this is like, this is equivalent to Ohio state getting Quinn Ewers in my opinion for, for what, you know, you're trying to build at Missouri. I, I think it's a huge commitment for them. Um, we might have him too low. There's people that have him higher than this. I mean, he might be a top 50 guy when it's all said and done. Everyone seems to really like this guy. Um, athletic, great arm. Bill, you know, is, is this – am I am I making too big of a deal out of this? No, I don't think so. I mean, if you look at Missouri's last, like, quarterback that they were thrilled to get was Connor Bazelak out of Ohio. You know, they were thrilled to get him, you know. And I think Sam Horn is more talented. I think there's a little boomer bust to this kid. Um, man, is he tall and he has a big arm and he's athletic. You know, he's a baseball kid. Um, so maybe there's not a boom and bust there. I don't know. Um, look like a little bit of a scatter arm, you know, in his film, but man, there, there was a lot to like there. That's for sure. And, um, we'll see, like I say, we'll see. I mean, I think a great get for Missouri, you know, so he's probably going to play early there. So I like him, but I did think there was a little boomer bust quality to this kid. Yeah, just um, that you know there is 
got to you have to almost grade the quarterback commitments on a, on a curve, you know, based on program trajectory and and things like that. And it's just it's just one of those things that just jumps out at you. You know, Missouri's getting a top hundred quarterback. That just that that's a that's a big deal for them. Um, all right, we got an Ohio State guy. We got an Ohio State commitment here uh, at number seventy five. It's our first. We have several Ohio State targets that we've talked about to this point, but this is our first Ohio State commitment on the list, and it's Gabe Powers out of Marysville, Ohio, a four-star linebacker. Um, is he a defensive end, Bill, or is he a linebacker? Let's start there. Yeah, he's a defensive end, and he's going to be an athletic defensive end rather than playing linebacker and have people questioning his – athletic ability as a linebacker you know I love this kid and like I say when we went over these guys there's another one coming up here in about five spots that you like more than I do this one I think I like him more than you do uh, even though we weren't that far apart but I think he's a, a physical kid I think he's going to be a pass rusher I think he's going to be really hard to handle for offensive tackles coming off the edge he's a high effort kid son of a coach I mean there's so much there to like with this kid and, and I like him a lot, you know, and um, I think he starts several years at Ohio state. And I think there's, there's no boomer bust to this kid at all. You know, I, I don't think he's chase young by any means, but I think, you know, what you're going to get from him. And I think what you're going to get from him is really good. So I, I like Gabe a lot. Yeah. We kind of had him flipped a little bit with our, with the next guy we'll talk about. That's, an Ohio state guy that's on this list. Um, I, yeah, I just, a little bit of position concerns. Um, I do think he's got to play defensive end. Is he long enough to do that? Flexible enough to do that? I, I think, I think it's possible. I wouldn't have, you know, put him as high in Ohio as we did. Um, I, you know, I wouldn't have voted for that if I, you know, if I thought otherwise, but I do think there are just a few questions. Um, and, but, yeah. Athletic. Again, I, I, I would rather him commit to playing defensive end and being a plus athlete as a defensive end right? versus being just a, just a run of the mill athlete at linebacker. I think yeah. anywhere, anytime you can move a position to where you're going from an average to a slightly above average athlete to now you're a plus athlete at that position. I think that's the right move to make. So we'll see if that happens. I have a feeling it will, but um, you know, I think uh, he was better. I, I guess the other thing I would say about him better as a junior than a sophomore, that sounds stupid. I mean, everyone should be better as a junior than a sophomore. It doesn't always happen that way. Um, well, and, especially and, with COVID last year, we saw right. a lot of juniors that were not better than what they right. were sophomores. So I, that's I thought, a credit to Gabe. Yeah. I thought he was a more impactful player. Um, I, I, when he, the first ranking started coming out for the class and he, you know, sophomore film, I'm like, doesn't, you know, he'll, he'll make a splash play or two, but I, I wanted to see a more consistent uh, impact of the game. I thought he did that. I thought he was a lot better as a junior. Um, I've watched him do his speed training. I've, I've like, I know how hard he works at this. So that's yeah. another factor I think that keeps him with a pretty, pretty high floor. I think um, I, I'd be shocking if he was a bust, I think. Um, again, like you said, I don't see a, I don't, I don't, you know, we got, we got the third Bosa and Jack Sawyer. I don't think he's the fourth Bosa, no. <laughs> but I also, I also don't think he's going to be a, I don't think a total bust is really in play uh, here. No. Um, I think he's, he's a safe, safe bet to be a good player. Um, okay. 74. Um, again, another, another guy who was, front and center we saw these quarterback dominoes uh back in like the fall into the winter and it was just crazy how a quarterback would go off the board and then you know everyone's scrambling to get their guy Quinn Ewers flipping to Ohio State was a huge catalyst to kind of what we saw and saw a bunch you know we saw a bunch of other programs start scrambling as guys started coming off the board and this guy was kind of at front and center of that um Cade Klubnik, uh, Austin, Texas, Westlake High School, uh, committed to Clemson. Um, there were a bunch of teams involved there. I'm trying to remember who all was involved there. I was Alabama part. Of, there were there were a few teams. I, think I, so. 
I may, I may be mixing up another guy we're going to talk about later who was part of this too, but I know Clemson and Alabama were kind of recruiting like some of the same quarterbacks there yeah, for a while. Yeah. You know, the one kid went to Alabama and then Clemson got this guy, uh, got Cade. Um, what do you see here? Um, you know, probably not the, the Deshaun Watson, you know, they've had, oh, no. they've had these, these big, big five-star guys, maybe not that, but seems like a guy who they can stash for a year or two and could, could turn into a really good player for them. Yeah. He's not Deshaun. He's not Trevor Lawrence. He's not DJ. He's not really anything that they've thrown out there lately, but I really like him. You know, another one of those Westlake kids are so well coached. Um, I thought he was above average in everything like arm strength, size, athletic ability, you know, 35 touchdowns against three interceptions. So that carries a lot of weight with me. So I, I liked him. I liked him a lot. It won't shock me if he's a career back up there and gets beat out by, you know, Dabo keeps bringing in these, you know, Lawrence's and DJ's this body, beautiful dudes, you know, so, and it wouldn't surprise me if he's a multi-year starter there either and wins a national title for him. So I like, I like Kate a lot. I think he's so smart. And then I think he's above average in every skill set that you need him to be. So, you know, it won't shock me if he starts two, three years and won't shock me if he gets beaten out by all these, you know, prototype, just body beautiful dudes. So we'll see with him. We'll see what happens. You, you know, who would word for word probably have fit that scouting report. Oh, I don't know. Four or five years ago, Mac Jones. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No doubt. <laughs> like, yeah. So now, better, buy, yeah. buy your time, wait yep. your turn and then get drafted in the first round. Absolutely. I can see this happening for Cade Glubman. Yeah. All right. Um, 73, a guy you really like, uh, Robert Woodyard, uh, Mobile, Alabama, Williamson High School, linebacker, four-star linebacker, committed to Alabama. Um, look, Alabama knows linebackers. So yeah. You, you, yeah. You, you pop in the film. It's like, yeah, that's an Alabama linebacker. Big, fast, athletic, you know, athletic can hit. It's like a train. Uh, you know, that's, that's what I saw. What did you see? Yeah, same thing. Run to the ball and make the play when you get there. You know, is he Raekwon McMillan? You know, I don't know. He's, he's really good. He's really impressive. And, um, you know, he's kind of an old school linebacker and those are kind of going out of style now. But this guy, man, in terms of a, a striker that can cover a lot of ground and, you know, he may, he, he he's not a drag down tackler. He's a knockdown guy. So I, I liked him a lot. Uh, I thought, a little bit more athletic than like Sean Murphy, you know what I mean? Similar player, but a little better, better in, at everything. So, you know, I can see where Saban likes him and, you know, he'll probably go there and have one heck of a career for them. I mean, he fits with what they want out of a Mike backer. Yep. They like to, they, they put those two inside guys in there. Yep. And, yep. You know, dare, dare, you know, I dare you to run the football on us type of, you know, and <laughs> so perfect. Perfect fit. Um, you know, I, I try not to get too caught up in like, I don't want to rank a kid. I try want to, I want to rank a kid kind of in a vacuum. I don't really want to be like, Oh, well he fits better here. So he needs to be ranked higher than this kid who maybe made a bad system fit decision. And we got to lower him. I don't play that game, but it is something that crossed my mind as I was, as we were doing this is boy, that just, it just felt like a great fit for Alabama. It just seems like a kid that should play there. Um, all right, we're we're running through it. We got two guys left here. Next guy is interesting. Um, I kind of relied on my Texas people on this one. I would like to see him in person. I, I just this is one where I think I needed some gaps filled, so I, I called around a little bit about this one. Um, Evan Stewart out of Frisco Liberty High School, four-star wide receiver. Another guy. That, there's a lot of variance here. I think I I have seen him on some top fifty lists. And then I think I saw one place didn't even have him in the top hundred. Um, I haven't seen him in person, watched some film, talked to, again, I, a lot of people I like to talk to in Texas just because Ohio state over the years has recruited Texas so much. Um, they, they were pretty high on him felt maybe top 50 was a touch aggressive. So I kind of um, voted on, you know, kind of settling him in here in the seventies. Uh, what do you think of Evan Stewart? 
Yeah, I like him a lot. Um, you know, we've got him 10 spots higher than Kojo Antwi, who I really like a lot as well. This kid, um, the film was really good. And then I didn't know if you saw the testing numbers that were posted. They're, they're amazing. Yeah. So, the, track kid. Definitely. Yeah, like, like a Test board. off the charts. You know, is he, you know, to me, kind of looked like a Garrett Wilson type, you know? And I, I, so there was a lot to like with Evan Stewart. He also kind of reminded me of, you know, like a Bama receiver, you know, one of the, the rugs, Devante, Jerry, Judy, Calvin Ridley from that family. He looks like he fits that to me. So I, I like Evan Stewart a lot. I think he's got a chance to be a really, really good football player. And again, the, the, the film is good, but then what sold it for me were those testing numbers are off the charts. So, you know, he's got a chance to be pretty special and he may be a guy we have too low. Yeah. I, I can be guilty of one thing I can be guilty of with this is I'm trying to almost correct the entire industry sometimes with like one thing the industry has done way too much of over the years. There, there are too many wide receivers ranked like in the top hundred. There just are like, you look at these rank. It's because I don't know if it's because they're, they're easy evaluations. Yeah. Right. They stick there's, out. A, there's a lot of them. There's a lot of guys who are five eleven to six one that are, can really run and can catch football. Like there's a lot of naturally occurring bodies in that, range and so you'll see times where i'm like they'll have 15 18 receivers in a top 100 i'm like what are you doing there's not gonna be 15 or i mean 18 receivers taken in the first three rounds of the nfl draft there's just not so i tend to grade receivers a little more harshly i guess in, in a way just because i feel like we have two we see too many of them on these lists where again it's like 18 or 20 of them in the top 100 i'm like you can't you can't be serious like there's not going to that's just not going to happen. Right. So I, I could be guilty here. Same thing with Kojo is we could, we could definitely reevaluate this. And these are two guys. I, I do agree. These are two guys that we've talked about here in the last couple episodes that could maybe move up. Um, we're going to wrap this up with a Buckeye. Um, and again, this was a guy that I'm a little higher on than bill. Um, we had, and this was the other thing though. We had to, so we do our Ohio rankings. We have to stick to those. So we yeah. can't, you yeah. know, we can't, we can't have one kid at number two in our Ohio rankings and another kid at number five in our Ohio rankings and have the kid that's number five be higher on the national list than the kids at number two. So we had to, we had to go in order obviously of our Ohio rankings. And, uh, this was our number two guy in Ohio. And again, I think Bill probably would have a different number two guy in Ohio. And we just kind of, you know, we, we, we flipped a coin or what, I don't know. We'll forget. We, we eventually just kind of decided on, on our order instead of, you know, we, we didn't fist fight or duel or anything, but, um, you know, we, we came out with, with Jair Brown, a four-star cornerback, Lakota West high school, uh, outside of Cincinnati, obviously the Louisiana transplant, um, uh, Buckeye commit, um, you know, I'll start with you, Bill, because again, I know I've kind of pounded the table here a little bit more than you have just in terms of his Ohio ranking and, and things like that. And I, it's not that you dislike him. You, you think he's one of the better guys, but you know, I, he would, he's my number two in Ohio. He may not be yours. Um, just your thoughts on Jair having maybe seen updated film and, you know, seen him more recently. Yeah. Again here, you know, first impression, um, you know, I came across as a guy that just did not like this kid at all. And that's not true. But again, he was like Sean Murphy in that early on, Jair Brown was ranked and talked about like he was Deion Sanders. So obviously I'm like, I can't wait to lay eyes on this kid. And then you do. And it's like, wait a minute. This is not a top 10 kid in America. This is not the next Deion Sanders, which is unfair to the kid. It's not his fault. He didn't rank himself there. So anyway, now that we're back to reality and you've got this kid 71 in America, okay, okay, now we're talking, not nine, not 10. So I like the skill set. He's got longer arms. He's aggressive. You know, that kid ain't scared. I'll tell you that right now. You know, we saw last year over the course of the season, we saw Sean Wade lose confidence to where the point where against Alabama, people were questioning, like, did he dog it? And it was interesting because I talked to my NFL scout guy that we did that, that stuff on a couple of weeks ago. And he told me, no, he didn't dog it. 
he lost his confidence. And by the time you get through that Bama game, he is mentally defeated. You know, and that's something Sean Wade's going to have to deal with in the NFL because you got to have no conscience and no memory. And when I look at Jair Brown, I see a kid has like zero memory. Like he'll get beat for a touchdown. Like, hey, ain't bother him because he knows that there's no chance that could ever happen again. It was a fluke. And I love that attitude in that kid. Now, I did not think he was the greatest athlete when we saw him last year at that Under Armour camp in terms of a run, jump, put up the pop the 40 time, pop the shuttle time, vertical leap out of the building. He wasn't that, you know, but but now when we're talking about him as a number 70 guy and a four star. Yeah, I do like him. I like his skill set. I love his mental makeup. I love the aggressiveness. So, OK, you know what I mean? It's not. I didn't like him for where he was originally ranked, but now that we're doing our own rankings and we can put him where we think he should be, I'm fine with Jair Brown. I think he's a heck of a player could start multiple years at Ohio state. You know, I think they put guys on the field last year that I don't think are going to be as good as what this kid's going to be. So yeah, I'm, I like Jair Brown. Yeah. I think he's a little more physical th- a version of uh, Marcus Williamson. Um I know that could elicit very several, several different types of responses from Ohio state fans hearing that. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, Marcus Williamson was a, you know, started a whole bunch of games this past season and probably will again. So I, I think Ohio state's getting a, a starter there. I probably a slot guy. Um, he is definitely one of the most competitive kids. I, I think yeah. I've covered the last yeah. He is extremely, extremely competitive. Um, the thing I liked about him most recently is, is, um, I, I was taking a look at him and he's definitely added some weight. Um, I was a little concerned cause he's not, you know, when the first time I saw him, I was expecting him to be six foot, maybe six one. He's, he's probably not, he's probably like five eleven. Um, and if you're that, if, if you're five, ten and a half, five eleven, you got to make up for that. In other words, you know, gotta be strong. And, and he was kind of slender. Uh, I thought yeah. last summer he's yeah. not now he, he has put on. 10 or 15 pounds of muscle again he's super competitive he's he's more quick and quick twitch than i think he is fast which i think again lends itself to playing in the slot yeah um and so i i look at that i think but i think he's a really good nickel corner prospect and um you know i, I like i said i'm i'm happy with him here um and then we'll, we'll again we'll see how he see how he does this is a kid we get the good thing about jair is we've seen him a lot and we'll, we should continue to get to evaluate him. That's not a guy that we should go six months without anything new. We should always be getting a new evaluation there. So I think that's one we'll stay on top of pretty well. Yeah. Um, well, that'll, I think that wraps it up. Yeah. We're at, we're at 71 now. So we're down to our top 70. Uh, we're going to try again. We're going to try and get these out 10 a day for the next week or so. Get, get this knocked out. Uh, we're going to have some interesting stuff to talk about at the end of the list. Uh, we're going to, do some cool stuff. I think with the rankings here at the end of the list, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that in a little bit, but um, you know, again, more Ohio state stuff coming. Um, it's, it's fascinating. We didn't set it up this way, but just like, there's just, it's there. You don't go too far up this list. There's always something to talk about while this, you know, this is a national list, but there's always every 10 there looks like there's, Oh, there's, there's a kid who's visiting Ohio state. There's a kid that's committed to Ohio state. There's a kid that like, like Malik Murphy, who's committed to Texas, but it was an interesting Ohio state, you know, angle to, to his recruiting process. So there'll be plenty of stuff like that to talk about here in the last 70, but uh, we'll, we'll wrap this up. We won't, don't want these to go too long. We're only talking about 10 guys each episode. So um, appreciate everyone listening and we'll, we'll see you uh, tomorrow with uh, number 70 through number 61.